hopefully. Welcome, everybody. This is Wednesday, September 19th, and we are on the teaching and learning call. My name is Tricia Gordon. I'm at the University of Virginia, and I'll be facilitating today's call. Um, I have pasted the Etherpad link into the chat for people to go there and just sign up that they're attending today, and that's also where the agenda is posted. So welcome, and happy to see you all on the call. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started uh, with some announcements, and my guess is that Wilma has some. <laughs> you would be correct. <laughs> Um, just a few announcements about um, the virtual conference. So that's coming up in November, November 7th. And um, if you've not yet registered, I, I highly encourage you to register. It's always a great event. Um, and if you're thinking about putting in a presentation, I'd like to nudge you to go ahead and do it <laughs> because people always say they don't think they have anything to, to present on. But really, um, folks love hearing about you know, what other people are doing at their institutions. Even if you might not think it's anything new and exciting, a lot of times for other folks, they've not seen it and it, it is new to them. So, um, so please consider um, submitting a proposal. The deadline is the 21st, although um, we are planning to extend that a little bit by like a week. Um, so if you need a, just a couple more days to, you know, for inspiration to strike, you'll still have a little bit more time. But we are going to do kind of a round of early acceptances at the end of this week. So the sooner you get your presentation proposal in, um, the quicker you'll hear back whether or not it was accepted. Um, and, uh, and again, we, we encourage all of you to submit proposals on things that you're doing and also, you know, spread the word on your campus. If there's faculty at your institution that have really nice course sites, um, we're really trying to encourage people to do these five minute, you know, lightning talk course showcases where they basically just kind of do a quick course tour and show people how they have their site set up. Um, that's something that the people have requested in the past to see more of. So um, we're hoping to generate a few more of those. Uh, so please encourage your faculty to um, to submit as well. Um, and and we need moderators for each session. We need a moderator. Yes, yes. Um, Terry's absolutely correct. And I sent out a, a message last week about moderators, but I will track the um, the URL down to to the sign up sheet and post that in there in the notes here in just a moment um and oh as far as the release cycle for for 12 we are planning on a 12.4 release very soon i think um all the blockers have been addressed so we're just doing some final qa and i would say maybe sometime next week or possibly the following there should be a 12.4 um, that's released. So that should be coming out really soon. Awesome. Those are, those are all of my announcements. I don't know if anybody else has some. There was a code freeze on 19, right? Yes, there was yeah. a code freeze. That was um, end of last month. So 19, uh, the, uh, the branch has not been cut yet. They're probably going to wait until after 12.4 to cut the branch. Um, because there were a few things that uh, they wanted to backport into 12. So, um, but once that happens, then uh, it, you know, they were given a couple of folks also a little extra time to squeak in some changes for 19 before the branch was cut. Um, but we're still on track for um, hopefully a, uh, a version 19 before Thanksgiving. That's the target. So we're hopeful that we can stick to that timeline. <laughs> That would be fantastic. Exciting. Anybody else have any announcements before we move into the main portion of our call today? All right. Well, I'm going to turn it over to Wilma. She's going to lead us through a Pharma Palooza. And uh, <laughs> thanks, Wilma. I'm excited to, to learn about what you've got to tell us. Great. Okay, let me get my web share going here. All right, 
So I'm sharing the screen. You should be seeing my um, my screen with farm on it. Let me know when that comes through. It's thinking about it. Yep, we've got it. Okay, great. So if you've not been to the farm website, this is what it looks like now. We did kind of a refresh on the um, the overall site over the summer, I guess. And um, and so what the the idea of the farm of Palooza um, was kind of taken from the idea of Jira Palooza, where we go through a bunch of Jiras. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to show you some of the new stuff that we're doing with farm in relation to Jira so that you know where to go to vote for stuff. So um, so farm is, if you're not familiar with it, it's, um, it's a Perio farm. It's basically a space for um, all of the projects to kind of connect and share ideas for things that they'd like to work on, ideas that they have for improving um, the software, whatever that software might be, whether it's Sakai or, or another Aperio project. And um, the, uh, the idea boards for kind of proposing those sort of idea generation types of things were here. So these are just sort of, hey, I really wish it worked this way. Is anybody working on that kind of ideas? Um, and then the, the thought process was that people who were working or interested in the same thing could kind of connect, um, you know, and, and gain support for their idea and then kind of evolve more into a, a working group. And at that point, we kind of move them up here to the greenhouse where they actually have, have a group of people that are meeting and talking about certain things. So you'll see that there's some stuff that's already in the greenhouse. And, um, and these are not limited to just um, sort of farm projects. If there's something that your institution is working on locally and you wanted to uh, update the community about it, you could also post it here as well. Um, but let me go back to the seeds area just to kind of show you um, what, what the Jirapalooza has to do with this. So um, what we had originally were these, all these boards went to a voting system. It was kind of like a free web uh, voting system called TriCider. And it, it worked okay, but it had its um, downside. There were ads and you know, there were some features missing that we weren't terribly thrilled about. So um, we decided to actually shift the Sakai seed board because really the Sakai one is the only one that currently has any ideas. So we shifted that to the Sakai Jira instead. So if you're well, familiar with you Jira. Focus in on that? Would you um, zoom in on the list there? Yeah, these are just all the different projects with boards. Yeah, I, can't, that could, I, I want to be able to see them. <laughs> um, so the, the Sakai board now goes to Jira. So what we did was in Jira, we created a project called Farm to kind of differentiate it a little bit because it's um, these are, are again these are more project based kind of uh, trying to get support for a, a project or form a group um, whereas uh, you know you can go into JIRA and, and just enter issues or features requests requests directly but sometimes those tie to a larger project so um, so we thought we would use this as a voting mechanism and and what I've done is I took all the stuff that was originally in TriCider and I plugged it into our farm project so you'll see that there's a good number of um, ideas in here and uh, these all came originally from folks that had posted them to uh, TriCider and so w when that um, the user if they were in JIRA I went ahead and put their name as the reporter the first person that that proposed the idea um, and then because there was no easy way to kind of port the comments and the votes from that system I just kind of pasted them in here in the comments so you'll see there's some information here this this came from Tricider, just so we could kind of keep track of it. Like this one, for example, extra credit questions and tests and quizzes. This came from Alan, and um, and there were six votes for this idea in Tricider. So that means that six other people went in there and and checked. You know, yes, I'm interested in this. I'd like to see this happen. Um, 
So I thought we would just kind of go through the list and give you guys an opportunity to see what's out there. And then maybe you want to go in and vote for some of these. Um, you just need to have a JIRA account. If you don't already, they're free and easy to set up. Um, so I encourage you to, to create one if you don't already have one. And that way you can go in not just to look at the farm stuff, but you can also go into the Sakai Project JIRA and check on any um, issues or requests or other um, you know bugs that you might be particularly interested in um, you can track the progress of those things there so um, so let me just uh, we'll just go down the list here these are just sort of sorted um, by number of votes but most of them all have like one vote I think because uh, they were just sort of ported over um, so they're not really in a, a specific order um, and uh, we'll start with the first one and just kind of I'll read it off and see if anybody has any thoughts on it or um, if you know it's something that you guys would be interested in so this first one is allow extra credit for questions and tests and quizzes and Alan had proposed adding the ability to mark a question as extra credit with an option um, in the assessment settings so that um, you can determine the cap of points possible or allow students to earn more than the top possible total possible points so he's got a couple of linked JIRAs these were requests that were put in um, as feature requests I, I would imagine and so he's linked them to this project um, so does anybody have any feelings about this would they use something like that Feel free to type into the chat or. I always like to defer to Tiffany, who's not on the call today, <laughs> about <laughs> tests and quizzes stuff because she knows it so well. Yes, <laughs> yes, she is the, the Samago guru. <laughs> right. It sounds like it would be a nice feature to me. Yeah. As long as it could be gracefully tied into grade book with the extra credit um, features there. Right, right. So I think currently you can add a, um, an additional point, but you have to do it manually. So you can add like more than a question is worth but mm -hmm. it has, there's not like really an extra credit option. You could make something worth zero points and then give people points for it, but it's not as clearly extra credit. It, it is hard to see your screen um, very well, so it might be useful for folks to go directly to that yeah. era in a different browser, I mean, and I'm gonna paste in that that's um, the filter that takes you to the list of all of them. So if you want to look at the, the filter, that'll pull all of them up here. Yeah. Oh, Terry, thanks. You pasted the direct URL to that particular one in. But yeah, you'll want the whole list. All right. So I'm going to move on to the next one. Um, if anybody has any thoughts, again, feel free to chime in. Um, this one is about modernizing forums, and this one actually saw quite a lot of votes on uh, TriCider. There were actually 28 votes in favor of this, and I, I plugged in all the names of the people that came out of the export, um, and these were some of the pro and con comments that were, had people had added when they um, responded to that particular item but this one actually got enough of a groundswell of, of support that um, sort of a group formed around this concept and has been meeting um, so if you check that greenhouse area in the farm site you'll see um, more information and how to get to like the meeting notes and stuff um, so if you're interested in being part of that uh, group feel free to join it's it's uh we're always welcome to new faces but um this one is about kind of modernizing the forums tool making it more user friendly um better support for multiple tabs 
better usability, less clicks to do things, um, or as this says, make everything in forms better generally. <laughs> So, um, so our, our group that has been meeting has come up with a few things that we sort of started with and um, and we started with kind of small things, uh, bite sized things that we could do a little bit at a time because forms is such a large tool that we didn't want to try to do too much and then um, have it be too daunting of a task. So we started with just some navigational changes and we have a, a parent uh, JIRA that is here. I've linked it already. Um, I'll just open this in a new tab so you can see. Um, and this has some other uh, you know, related JIRAs. Um, that go along with it and a few subtasks as well. These are also some of their JIRAs that were opened previously. Um, but these have uh, things to do with like the naming um, of buttons and the labeling, um, the, the way the hierarchy of forums works. So all of these things were related to sort of navigational elements of the UI. And that's kind of where we decided to start with uh, with forums improvements uh, but if you care about forums and this is a high priority for you i encourage you to vote uh, for the modernized forums farm jira and uh, and let people know that you're interested because again it, it just shows kind of community support for particular items so if there's ever a choice of um, you know which thing to work on first um, if you know if it's a toss-up between two things and we can go into JIRA and see that one of them has a whole bunch of votes and the other one doesn't um, that's definitely gonna you know lead us toward the the thing with the most votes so um, while we don't have a formal voting process it, it definitely helps so again I encourage you guys to think about voting for this one um, does anybody want to say anything about modernizing forums? Any kind of wish list items that uh, that you'd like to see? Wilma, I don't know if this is addressed by other JIRAs, but something that we are continuously burned on are uh, students who have Sakai timeout and log them off in the background while the page is still showing the forums tool. So they mm -hmm. go to post and their post goes into the ether. Ah, okay. Yeah, that one I don't think is addressed. So I would definitely encourage you to add that as a comment here, that that's an issue, or maybe even open um, because that's one that we've not addressed thus far in the, the modernization of forums meetings. But that is a good a good thing to bring up because, and it looks like Jennifer in the chat is saying that they, that happens to them too. So we have, yeah, we have talked about uh, saving a draft, right? That, yeah, we've you know, talked about so saving they, a draft, they, but they, if they're timed so they, out, they, they probably don't realize, and they wouldn't have stopped to save. Yeah, I'm guessing yeah, that's a that's a problem everywhere with the editor, not just forums. With the time would out. a warning on the editor you know you're going to time out in 10 seconds or something like that would that well that? i think it would be even better if it just auto saved <laughs> yeah yeah well and, uh, and some of these do but so we have talked know, about that we've talked about that and we've talked about the save as draft rather than posting it only so but yeah, yeah. auto save would gotcha. be good yeah I'm sure there will probably be a variety of ways it could be addressed, but determining what makes the most sense uh, across Sakai um, would probably be useful. Yeah, it's it's really weird. The more you get into these conversations, the more you realize the law of unintended consequences and that you tweak something here and it breaks something there. And you you know it's it's just tracking down a Gordian knot. It's just really weird. Yes, yeah, I agree. Gordian knot, good analogy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay, I see a few comments in the chat um, asking if this was related to, let's see, it was based on the session timeout and then Laura's suggesting increasing the system timeout. Um, That's one way to go. Um, yeah. And unfortunately, when you're typing in the editor for a long time, the system, the rest of the system doesn't recognize that as active actual activity until you say or do something um, and so just typing away in the editor doesn't register as activity and it doesn't so it doesn't keep your session alive so it you know we could you know I suppose that's one option I'm not sure if there are reasons not to do that there might be um, but I, ideally, my mind and auto save would be um, periodic auto save of whatever you're doing in the editor would be ideal. Yeah, that sounds like it might be um, almost a separate thing because it's really more to do with the editor than it is a particular tool because the editor is throughout the system. So, right. yeah, and Laura is mentioning that um, Sam let her know that people are changing their browser behavior and many apps are elong elongating their session timeouts. So um, there could be some interaction going on there with the user's equipment. Yeah. But, but that's a good idea and a very good point. So I would definitely document that somewhere in JIRA, whether it's uh, as a farm idea, as an addendum to an existing farm idea, or even just as a just a regular JIRA um, feature request and or bug, depending on uh, how you want to classify it. But that's definitely something that it looks like people are seeing um, at more than one institution. So. Yeah. Thanks, Wilma. Yeah. Good idea, Adam. All right, so any other thoughts on modernized forms? So we'll go to the next one. All right, so I'm gonna move along. Um, so the next one here is send instructor feedback to gradebook for lessons, student pages, questions, and comments. Um, this is uh, related to uh, any kind of items that you drop in like inline questions where you might have a grade or something um, so this is a screenshot I think that uh, Becky put in here because she was the one that proposed this um, that you've got comments for other things that go to the gradebook from various tools but the lessons questions uh, currently don't so um, so she's asking that. And there was one vote on this one. Any thoughts from anybody? Well, you, it says less than questions, but isn't it the, the forum's feedback? That doesn't I think go to the picture back? came from forums just showing how other tools send things to the gray book. At least that was how I understood it. Yeah, but. Um, but the for the instructor feedback in forums doesn't go to the gradebook. I remember that being the conversation. Well, it looks like she's showing how other tools, tests and quizzes, assignments, and it looks like forums. If you use the comment field and it's linked to the gradebook, it should be sending those comments. So I think what she's saying here is that lessons doesn't and it's the only one that doesn't so to make it consistent. Right, um, forum is a grade book. Sorry I didn't catch all of that, whoever that was. Uh, this is Charles. Um, Hi Charles. Uh, forum comments do go to the grade book. It, the only issue I, I have with this option and it primarily comes really with comments from a, the assignments tool, which can be long, is that um, 
the display can really screw up the when the comment if there are long comments it messes up the display of the grade book um, from the student point of view because you end up with these big giant spaces between um, items because the, the comments are so large. So if there was some way to control the the display of comments in the grade book from the student point of view, that becomes more useful. Right, so you'd like to see some sort of like uh, scrolling that happens like after a certain amount it truncates it or um, right. maybe a, a modal window that overlays with the full comment. Something yeah, that, they that would work too. Expand the comments. Yeah, I like the idea of consistency from all the tools that can send grades to the grade book should also send comments if comments are an option in that tool. Yep, I agree. And actually, I'm going to skip down a little bit because there's one that's kind of related to this. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, it's related to grading. Yeah, standardized grading workflows. This is um, something that Matt had proposed a while back. And um, this has to do with just standardizing the way that, that grades are handled across the system. Um, and so he's got a, a link to a JIRA, but then I've also put in some um, links to some related JIRAs. Some of these I opened um, about creating a, a centralized grading service. Um, and basically what this would do would be to um, set up kind of a, a grading hub that every tool uses so that grades aren't being managed independently in each tool. Um, it kind of increases the overhead of, for the code for each of those tools to have their own sort of grade functionality coded into that particular tool. So rather than like assignments handling its own grades and just sending those grades to the gradebook and forums and Samago and all those other tools doing the same thing, that all of the tools should just use one centralized service so that it's That's consistent. Great. Um, so yeah, I've created a bunch of sub JIRAs for that related ones. That's, but that's great, one. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. I would agree wholeheartedly to create a standardized um, central hub for that. And I think this one, if it happens and is applied to lessons, could also um, address Becky's concern here with the feedback because you'd want both grades and feedback to uh, right. be transferred. Cool. Anybody else? So, encouraging people to vote for these things, right? Yeah, the ones that you guys think are the most critical, really encourage you to go in and vote for them. Um, because again, that will draw a little more attention to those uh, and let people know that it's something you're interested in. And also, like I mentioned, some of these have, have like the modernized forums. Um, some of these have seen a little bit of work outside of you know the original idea, but some of them haven't. They were just sort of proposed and people said, hey, that's cool, and nothing else really happened with it. So if there's any of these that you think, oh, you know, that's a pain point for us, we're really motivated to do something about that. Um, you know, any of these ideas might be a good contender for, for something to kind of pick up the torch and, and form a group around if it's something that you'd like to see um, really change quickly or at least, you know, gather more momentum um, for, you know, 19 is kind of already done as far as features, but for Sakai 20, which will hopefully come out um, in in 2020. So, um, so anyway, We'll move on to the next one. Um, this one's just about the rally plan. This is kind of a general one um, to talk about accessibility. And obviously this is an important 
piece of Sakai, um, something that is is something that's required, but it's also the right thing to do. So this is something that we've been working on um, a lot more outside of, of just farm. Um, you know, there's the accessibility meetings and Terry uh, co-leads that group. So Terry, I don't know if you want to say anything about um, the accessibility review plan. The level access, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> the level access assessment that we got last spring has actually stimulated a lot of JIRAs related to accessibility in a separate um, category. <coughs> I'm sorry. The um, the assessment was um, startling in a lot of aspects, but it turned out that there were a lot of global issues that could be addressed with coding that applies to all the pages. And that's something that's been very aggressively worked on this summer. Um, but it seems uh, like a lot of the things that were resolved in version 11 got broken in version 12 and that's one of my concerns about 19 coming so fast is we're still working vigorously trying to fix all these issues in 12 and 19's coming along and um, until we kind of have uh, permeated this idea of accessibility on the front rather than as a remediation plan um, I'm concerned with how much is going to get broken after we've worked so hard to get it all fixed over the summer. But um, but the accessibility meeting, if you're interested in the issue, this, this afternoon at 4. And uh, a lot of these issues are being, like I said, aggressively pursued and with a different whole different set of JIRAs in a different category. Um, but yeah, there's a lot going on there. Uh, I don't know if that il illuminates anything here, but um, we're actively seeking funding for retesting again on 12. Um, how it's going to go forward in 19 is a question. And what's more, um, WCAG, the accessibility standards, has come out with a new version of its own and how that's going to impact our uh, um, accessibility going forward and whether or not those new standards we're going to how we're aggressively we're going to try to incorporate them and not just stick with the original 2.0 version but incorporate the 2.1 is also still a question is there okay. still a funding question with the um, ability to um, contract with level access to um, evaluate the Chi 12 after fixes get in? That's largely it, yeah, because that's a third party service, of course, and it's not free. Longsight has generously d um, donated <coughs> development hours. Was originally going to be Matt and Earl, but now Matt's not in there anymore, so Earl's been working aggressively on it. Josh has been giving as much support as he's had time to do, and uh, a lot of the fixes and stuff are being worked through that way. Yeah, um, but we are still looking for funding for that. But so. yeah, the, it needs to be reassessed, retested. We're hoping to get a high enough score that we can have a VPAT, um, a certification on our accessibility level that um, that we can market and have out there and just say, OK, Sakai's so got mm -hmm. This level, this degree of accessibility, and we're really friendly to all users and all that kind of stuff. So um, that's the kind of uh, that's the kind of impetus that we have going behind yeah. that. What does anybody know? What uh, how much funding is needed for that? How much we've gotten so far? And well, what I don't know how much we've gotten so far because most of that's going in through Ian Dolphin, but um, but the goal going into it was around fifty, sixty thousand dollars. So they were reaching out to some of the bigger schools who have a lot of um, emphasis on developing this particular ability in in the software, and uh, I'm not sure Josh would have a better idea of. And, and Ian would have a better idea of what's actually come in. I haven't seen anything lately. 
Uh, yeah, I know a I know few institutions have contributed. Yeah, I know a EVA. lot of them made it real fast. It, yeah. Pepperdine did it before we got the before we got the <laughs> solicitation letter out. They'd already sent fifteen or twenty thousand dollars. So yeah. okay. And I know UVA made a contribution. Um, I'm not sure how much is outstanding um, at this point. Yeah. So I think I think Ian was checking with a lot of folks, and Josh was also reaching out to some folks. So we were waiting to kind of yeah. see how because much was still left. That's going to impact the timing of what can be done for what version, I guess. Yeah, and uh, it's it's really hard because it's a <coughs> it's a moving target and it's always developing and we're always developing and like I said a lot of things that were fixed in version 11 got unfixed in 12 and it remains to be seen what's going and I don't know I I've thought about it just today I thought well I probably should get in on the QA team and see how many of those accessibility breaks are involved in 19 oh, yeah. and that's the first time I thought about it in that way so but anyway it's, yeah. it's an ongoing thing and it's a big deal on its own and we could probably do one of these uh, accessibility loses. Oh, wait. Uh, accessibility <laughs> yeah, we could. Loses. Just go through all the outstanding accessibility issues. Yeah, um, yeah. We well, probably wouldn't get to them all in one session. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to do a Jira Palooza in October, so maybe we can um, focus on some of the top accessibility issues in that yeah yeah and that would be really helpful I think to um, on a lot of levels because of course accessibility on Sakai platform is one thing but developing an awareness of develop of, of how instructors and designers and developers need to put make their stuff accessible as they put it on the platform you've got two that different levels here just because it's on Sakai doesn't mean that what you put on Sakai is in itself accessible and and so that's a realization that needs to be had well it's supposed to be accessible it's on Sakai well no you put it there it's not accessible unless you made it accessible right so the, right. the difference and the duality there is something that doesn't always yeah. get me yes indeed Great. Well, thank you, Terry. Um, yes. I don't know if that helped is, Well, it's definitely something we need to you know, keep reminding people because it is a big deal. So Yeah, and, and to front end it, you know, that it shouldn't be a matter of, oh, we always have to go back in and fix it, but it, it should be in on the design process, on the development process. When you're putting it in, you think, okay, now I need to remember to add that heading code. I need to remember to make that button focusable because one of the standards that's changed is that the integrity of the content needs to be maintained whether it's landscape or portrait and the the buttons need to have the desktop. same <laughs> hmm? or, and the buttons need to have this right um, and the buttons need to have the same contrast standards that text does right. and this is a real problem because I know I've have buttons that are white on white that I'm seeing and whether it's a Sakai issue or a lamp issue or a Johnson skin issue I'm not sure but there are are some real issues that are still there that I'm sure a lot of people see so cool thank you all right, yeah. so um, I'm gonna move on we could keep talking about accessibility but that would take like the rest of the session. So yeah, let's well, see we if we can get through a few more of these. Um, we can do I that know, at four o'clock this afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're interested, go to the accessibility call. Um, they're always welcoming new faces as well. So um, feel free to, to join any of those if you're interested. Um, the next one in the list here is an undelete feature people were asking for. Um, this one was not actually suggested by me, but the the user um, in there, I didn't know who uh, Dusan was. I'm not sure. That might be Duke School of Nursing, maybe. Um, but there was no individual that I could select. So um, anyway, but a few people came up with um, you know votes for this one, and I think I've heard actually the um, the soft delete. 
um, mentioned before, and there appears to be an existing um, JIRA about adding it. I don't know if anything has been done on it yet. Let me see. Um, it's related to a few other things. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, this one seems to be pretty popular um, to have kind of an undelete or uh, a trash option for a lot of tools. Yes. Be very helpful. All right. So I'm going to move on to group management. Now this one, and and some of you may have experienced this now that the group locking um, was implemented in 12. We've been getting a lot of people uh, putting in tickets asking about this and um, because they're encountering certain things that um, wasn't typical in the same workflow that they had before with the whole management of groups. Um, now this farm project is more about the management of groups across the system, but it's related to things like um, the group locking within assignments. So you know how assignments has that group submission feature and there was an issue where if you um, changed the membership or deleted a group after there was a group submission, then the group submission became um, unretrievable. Um, there's also some issues that happen in tests and quizzes. If something is assigned to a group um, and there's assessments that have been taken and then the group is deleted, that can cause problems. So there are a lot of problems happening with um, modification of groups after things have been already submitted. Um, so there was this group locking thing that was put into place for assignments. Um, I believe that's the only place that it currently locks, although there was some talk of adding it, some kind of locking mechanism similar to that. Uh, for tests and quizzes, but I don't believe it's been implemented. Um, so this was one that I think maybe we talked about at one of the prior teaching and learning calls. Um, and uh, you know, I encourage you guys, if you have any thoughts on the way groups should work, <laughs> to go ahead and document those here, even if it's just a comment describing your ideal kind of workflow for how groups would happen. Because that was one thing that we were sort of struggling with. Um, I know in a few meetings that I was in, is trying to figure out the best way to handle it so that it didn't disrupt um, the way courses typically run because you may have groups that are automatic if it's a, a section kind of add drop sort of activity that happens in the background and um, and yet you've assigned things to certain section groups and, and Sakai actually te treats sections and groups the same um, even though they are two distinct types of things but in terms of permissions and things they, it treats it um, more or less the same in the background. So anybody have any burning thoughts on group management? We've, we've already had one instructor here at the University of Virginia who has just really struggled with the way group groups are handled right now. And <laughs> I don't yeah. think he's very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Not too happy. <laughs> no, he's using assignments and groups. And, and of course, at the beginning of the semester, a lot of enrollments change dramatically for a couple of weeks until the add drop period is over. So it has wreaked a little bit of havoc for him. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, I would encourage you to, to kind of get from him, you know, sort of the feedback on how it, how it, he feels it should work so that we can incorporate mm -hmm. that into some sort of plan to hopefully address, you know, the, the most common use cases. Oh, we've got some music. Somebody's on hold or something. <laughs> Zach, rather. Is that my phone? <laughs> oh my god. I don't know. There's two callers, it looks like. There's a 401-865 number. And I think that's the one that's... Can you hear it? I'm going to mute my phone. My, uh, 
fantastic. I just upgraded my iPhone, and now I've noticed it started playing something earlier and didn't. So I have no idea. <laughs> That's all right. We'll just have the theme music for the last few minutes. Sorry. It looks like it stopped. Okay. Um, oh. Oh yeah, you're, you're right. I can mute. I'm gonna mute whoever that was. Are you still able to talk, Trisha? Uh, do you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So you're a wireless caller, not the other number. So whoever you oh, are okay. calling in, I muted you. Um, <laughs> if you need me to unmute, you let me know. Uh, thanks for the reminder, Becky. All right. So yeah, definitely some some more discovery I think needs to happen around how groups should work in in an ideal world so if you have any thoughts on that again I encourage you to go in here and just add a comment you don't have to create all new JIRA or anything but add a comment that kind of describes how it would work best for you and your faculty um, so that we can start to gather some of those use cases um, and if this is a pain point that you guys are experiencing you know go in and vote and let us know that so that we know that it's something that needs um, needs more attention. Um, let's see, we already talked about standardized grading workflows. So that one we don't need to talk about again, I don't think. Um, this one is on LTI H5P as content authoring. And this was actually, let's see, um, there's another uh, JIRA that was uh, opened on this. Let's just take a look and see here. Um, and this is open source with all kinds of authoring options. Um, it's it's another another type of, of project. And I think that there, there was some stuff that was presented at um, Open Aperio along these lines. So um, I don't know if Laura is still on the call. Laura, did you want to speak to this one since this was your idea? Everyone vote. It's a great authoring system. <laughs> rah! Rah, rah. <laughs> All right. Go to the next one. Uh, Farm 17 copying content improvements. This is one that's also actually seen some work. Um, this one has been uh, discussed quite a bit, and, um, and we actually uh, started to tackle this a little bit in the the long site clientele group that we've kind of gathered to pool resources to address some of the JIRAs that are, are um, high priority for some of our institutions in that group and um, and so there's a roll-up JIRA that you can view here this is a, a parent JIRA with a lot of other related items that will be um, linked to it as we go. There's there's quite a few that are already linked, and I'm sure there's going to be more added before we're done. Um, but this all has to do with the workflow for moving from one um, semester to the next. So we all have this kind of routine where you know you, you get the the batch of new sites for the next term, and then faculty have to roll their content, um, or maybe the institution um, copies templates or creates sites for faculty. And 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 this JIRA is really all about optimizing those processes so that it's easier, fewer clicks, fewer, you know, redundancy, um, fewer repetitive kinds of carpal tunnel generating <laughs> motion. Um, so, you know, making things more efficient and um, able to be managed better. So, um, yeah. Would what you add that? the Google Doc to the description? Sure. Let me um, because we're uh, we're beginning to spec out um, well to the description for the farm farm 17 yeah let me go yeah. back here okay because as you can see from the JIRA a lot of issues have been in. identified that prevent the um, um, consistent use of import from site duplicate and reuse content from other sites as well as creating a course site that you then use for um, integrating with your SIS system. Uh, in other words, the course site becomes a template 
that your SIS course management process uses to create new sites using that template. Templates, so you can define templates for departments or colleges or whatever, and have them, you know, with uh, maybe an example structure or help test text or whatever. That part of that part of Farm 17 has been adopted by Notre Dame because that is our main process for uh, creating course sites. Yep, if you want to look at it, this is it here. It should, is it open for everybody to view or do we need to? This is I'm sharing sure it's that. open to everyone. Okay, yeah, anyone with the link can view. Okay, yeah. Um, so yeah, you guys can go through and look at this in more detail um, if you like. And if there's any of these that you want to contribute to, um, feel free to let me or Laura we're no. testing, yeah, we're testing in JIRA creation. So uh, on the sheet that um, Wilma's displaying, G7 is the portion that Notre Dame has adopted. And um, in a brief call we had a few days ago, we decided that um, the next colored ones, what is it, G9? G14 and, and G9. Those are going to be kind of the next two targets. So G14 has, um, it's it's basically making the copy process more granular. So you know like right now when you copy from term to term or from site to site, you can choose all of a tool. So you can copy all of your tests and quizzes, but if you only wanted like two of them, you have to go in and then and delete all the other ones you don't want. Same with lessons. Like if you copy over lessons from one site to another, you have to take them all and then delete the ones you don't want. Well, this would make it so that you could actually go in and just select the items that you want um, to copy. And also the idea of making it, um, uh, less, uh, it, fewer clicks because you wouldn't have to um, change everything to publish. So if you have a site all set up and, um, and you wanted to uh, copy it over for somebody else, like if you have a central template that you set up and then you copy it out for like all the adjuncts in a department, let's say, um, that you could then just duplicate that course and not have to republish everything. Because right now when you bring everything over, it all comes over to draft um, so that there would be some kind of setting that you could choose to not bring it over that way and just bring everything over published. So that's what those two um, items are about. Any other thoughts on this one? Copy and content. We're at uh, 1055 and I don't know if we have time for one more or not. Wilma, what do you think? Um, I think we can probably stop here just so we don't okay. rush. But, um, but I do want to remind everybody that all of these are in here. Feel free to go through and, and look at the rest of them, the ones that we didn't get to. And, um, you know, vote for the ones that are important to you. Add comments. Um, you know, about you know, how this would impact your users or, or maybe you have, um, you know, kind of a, a, an add-on requirement or idea related to a topic. Uh, the more information we can get out here, the better uh, to really kind of connect those ideas and, and get them moving forward. So, um, so it's here and it's in JIRA and hopefully it'll help provide more visibility to items um, from JIRA and vice versa. So people that maybe aren't in JIRA yet, maybe it'll encourage you to go ahead and, and make an account so you can start voting for things. And if you're already in JIRA, maybe you'll um, take a little more notice of the ones that are actually kicking around in farm um, because we can link yeah. them together pretty easily. So anyway, so that's yeah. it for JIRA Palooza, Pharma Palooza <laughs> this week. Which is actually kind of a JIRA Palooza too. Yeah, uh, yeah. Wilma, thank you so much. This is really helpful to, to see where these are now. And um, so we, you know, many of us, I think, are familiar with JIRA and know how to log in and probably already have accounts. So it's helpful to, to know where to find the farm specific um, items and 
um, understand that we should go there to vote. Yep. Uh, so, so that's really helpful. Thanks for walking yeah. us through through these. So, yeah, and remember, if you go to the farm website, it's just farm.apiro.org. On the seeds page, if you go to this link here, this will take you to that filter that shows you all of the current farm ideas. Um, you can also search for it in JIRA, but if you just you know aren't in JIRA at the moment and you want to just go to this list, um, that's where you can find it. So um, just as a kind of a reminder for folks, it's off of that seeds page for the yeah. ideas. That's so. great. Thank you so much. And I put a link the JIRA filter in the Etherpad. Great. As well. Thank you right. again. You're I very just want welcome. to take a minute or two to talk about upcoming meetings. Um, we have an opening on October 3rd, which is our next scheduled meeting. Uh, and then I plan to do a JIRA Palooza on October 17th. So Terry, maybe you could uh, sort of be thinking about which accessibility JIRAs you would like to talk about in there, and I'm going to get in input from people in the community as to what JIRAs we're going to look at. So I am not okay. going to come up with that list myself. Uh, so I would really appreciate it. I'm going to send out an email to everybody inviting um, your input on uh, which JIRAs are most important to you for us to talk about. Um, then in November, We've got the Sakai Virtual Conference on November 7th, so that will, we will not have a meeting that day. And then on the November 21st, that is a holiday for many of us in the U.S., um, so we will not be meeting in November. Um, but we will resume in December, so a lot going on. I know everybody's busy. Um, and if you do have suggestions for October 3rd or would like to present on a topic, please reach out to me or Wilma or Matt and let us know because we would really like to um, talk about things that, that are interesting to you all. Trish? Yeah. Um, a suggestion on the, tw on the 7th for the Sakai Virtual Conference. What if mm -hmm. there was a meeting and uh, and promoted in a way to promote people who have not participated in TNL calls to try it out? Well, there is going to be a community update where many yeah, of people who, you know about that already. Yeah. But I'm not sure what, yeah. what more you had in mind there. <laughs> well, just to have, you know, to present it, this, uh, try out our teaching and learning meeting if you haven't ever attended one this is open to all and this is what it's like and we present these kinds of things and you know just to try to beef up the P and L experience it's just, and interest yes gotcha I That's think it. this is a great resource for a lot of people who've never tried it out yeah I'll think about it Okay. <laughs> Not it's gonna just make a problem. promise. I have right. I do have other duties that day, so um, yeah, we'll see. Okay. We'll talk. Wilma and Matt and I can talk about what we might actually be able to do if we did that. But thanks for the suggestion. Sure. All right. Well, thank you guys. I have to drop off. Um, but yeah. I appreciate you being here for the Jirapalooza today. <laughs> yes, thank you again, Wilma, and everybody for being on the call. We'll uh, talk to you soon. Bye.